That rave was wild. Uh, not talking about my weekend. If you haven't seen it yet, check out our video on recombinant DNA and you'll see what I mean. Anyway, I hope you had lots of fun. And on that note, let's discuss blotting, a common laboratory procedure that checks for specific DNA, RNA, or protein sequences. Blotting has a bunch of practical applications, like diagnosing disease, monitoring gene expression during treatment, forensic analysis, and much more. All right, so where to next? Well, here's the park map covered in bird poo, naturally. We'll use this trusty compass to describe the blotting techniques. First is Southern blotting, a method developed by Edwin Southern in the mid-70s. It looks for individual DNA sequences in a large sample of DNA. To remember that, head on down south and hop onto the blue double helix roller coaster. Next is the Northern blot, which was developed by Sandra Northern. <laughs> nah, only kidding. It's just called Northern blot because the first one was called Southern. Northern blots identify unique RNA sequences. They're especially helpful for quantifying levels of gene expression. Up north is Epnot's orange monorail, our recurring symbol for RNA. Then there's the western blot that uses labeled antibodies to identify specific proteins. Now, if you're looking for more adventure, migrate west to Amino Island. Man, those amino animals are so cute. Mm, nothing like a cuddly little vulture. Then there's also the southwestern blot. That's essentially a hybrid of southern and western blot. This method uses labeled double-stranded DNA probes to look for DNA binding proteins, depicted by this connecting bridge. Ready for more roller coaster action? Here's a pro tip. Take the bridge. You'll get there fast and you'll skip the line. All right, we'll wrap up this section by going over the eastern blot. It looks for post-translational modifications, specifically lipids, phosphates, and or sugar groups that get tacked onto proteins. And out east is Epnot's food court, the place to customize meals and whatnot. Now let's look at the actual process of setting up a blot. We'll illustrate the steps of southern blotting since test writers love asking questions about it. However, keep in mind that the same principles apply to other blotting techniques. First, restriction enzymes cut DNA into smaller pieces. This is depicted by a maintenance worker using shears to prune the shrub. Next, the pieces of DNA are separated by gel electrophoresis. Without diving too much into the details, the pieces are loaded into wells at one end. An electric current is then applied to move the pieces across the gel. The gel has pores that function like a sieve. Smaller DNA molecules travel through the gel faster than the large ones. Kind of like how this leaf blower moves the small leaves further away than the big branches. Okay, some more points about gels. They're divided into agarose and polyacrylamide, or PAGE gels. Agarose gels have low resolving power. They're good at separating large fragments of nucleic acids and proteins. To remember that, we've added roses to the big branches. On the flip side, PAGE gels have higher resolving power, so they'll separate small fragments better. And here are some pages between the small leaves to remind you of that. Something to be aware of is that gels must have at least one well with a standardized reference or ladder to accurately compare expected size with sample size. All right, now where are we? Oh yeah, we'll transfer these fragments to a filter and then add a radio labeled DNA probe represented by this radio walkie talkie. This probe will attach to our target DNA sequence by hybridization. Well, I bet that leaves a sour taste in our groundkeeper's mouth. Finally, the target DNA sequence can be identified after the filter is exposed to film. And boom goes the dynamite. That's how to perform a southern blot. Whew, that was a blot to learn. <laughs> I'm going to catch the monorail, but in the meantime, here's a swift summary. Blotting is a molecular biology procedure that detects specific macromolecules and has many practical applications. There are many different kinds of blotting techniques. Southern blots detect DNA, northern blots detect RNA, western blots detect proteins, southwestern blots detect DNA binding proteins, and eastern blots detect post-translational modifications of proteins. To perform a southern blot, we first need to separate the components by gel electrophoresis. Next, the bands are transferred to a filter. Then, radio-labeled probes are added, allowing for hybridization. And finally, exposing the filter to film reveals the target DNA sequence.